Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle and I work as a physician associate in Acute Med. So in this video, I'm just gonna be talking about the guaranteed way that I succeeded in the national and that you can as well. So I know that you know that you should probably be studying by now, so I'll get right into it. Firstly, before I do that, congratulations for getting in because I know that there's many hurdles that you have to get through before you actually get in. So clap for yourself. Now, the National is an awful time in anybody's life, but it is split into two sections. You have the written section and then you have the ASCII. Now, the written section is, from memory, it is three hours long. Now, in terms of gathering all of that information, you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, which book should I read? Which was my exact thought, but during PA school, I just used one book for information gathering. Let me show you. This is the book that I used religiously. I read this book from cover to cover. It's very well loved. As you can see, there's images inside. There's, I have used this book. There's ECGs, there's images of CT scans, there's x-rays, there's everything that you need to know. There's diagrams, just wonderful. Okay, okay, I don't, <laughs> but it is a really wonderful book. I use this book religiously and I believe, and I tell everybody that I know that this is the one book that allowed me to pass the written section of my nationals. So go and buy this book. Do it now, if you want to, boundaries. Post-graduation, some of the books that I've used are as follows. So. I use this book quite a lot. Uh, I've worked in AMU before and it served me quite well, so you might wanna get this one as well. I am a gastro nerd, so I was actually gifted this book and thank you so much for getting me this book because I read it all the time and it makes me really happy. I was so happy when I got this book. Thank you. And the other one that everybody needs to be using is this one. Now I have the 10th edition because it serves me pretty well. I'm pretty sure there's a new edition every month, but this one is great. Now, in order for you to be able to determine if you're actually working at the standard that the national requires of you, it's important to do uh, MCQ questions in a timed manner. So I used this book as well. Well, I used a different I used a different book, but very similar to this one. The previous one that I had, I gave to a colleague of mine because she was undergoing her exams. But yes, this is by the same author, Dwayne A. Williams, a very wonderful man. And these books are just, have completely changed my life. So I would honestly recommend these books hand on heart. Now, the next part of your national is the OSCE. And from memory, that was 14 stations with two rest stations. Now, the way it's structured is so, for instance, you get eight minutes. Now, the stations can be different. It can be a history taking station, a history taking station plus examination, or it could be an examination station where you don't talk to the patient, you just do the examination. Or you can have the killer one in which you have the history taking, the examination, as well as formulating a differential diagnosis, investigations and management in one station. Now, I've come up with a formula that's ensured that I have success in each of my stations, especially the history taking stations. If you can remember this formula, I can promise you it's gonna make the whole process so much easier for you. I promise. So let's get into it. So it's a high pressure situation. You don't wanna to have to be thinking about anything other than what you absolutely need to do. Now, if we can take the thinking out of it, it will really help you to focus on the important information. So this is how you should structure a history, okay? Okay, so what I mean is here, presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, ICE. You need to do an ICE, okay? <laughs> Ideas, concerns, expectations. If you don't do that, you will lose a lot of marks. Past medical history, past surgical history, drugs, allergies, family history, 
social history, smoking, occupation, foreign travel, alcohol. If you need to, you can do a cage for alcohol. Another thing that you could do is another S. S, systemic inquiry, okay? Anybody, anytime a patient mentions pain, make sure you do a Socrates, side onset course, I don't know, is it radiating, <laughs> associated symptoms of time, exacerbating factors, the pain score. Now I put glass AC here. This is when you're doing a mental health history. Okay, I will not um, tell you the cardinal symptoms because you need to learn that yourself. Otherwise I'll be here for ages, okay? So in a mental health history, you want to include many of the things that we've mentioned here, but also you want to include your glass AC. Now with your mental health history, of course there's a lot more to it, but as long as you include your glass AC, you should get the majority of the marks. Guilt, low mood, appetite, suicidal ideation, sleep, agitation, concentration, and obviously depending if this is a teen, you'd obviously include your heeds and all the other things. But as long as you have this, I can assure you that you will take a fluent history on which you get marks for for fluency as well. So you need to be able to do this, okay? So remember, fit DAFs, sofa, Socrates, Glass AC, DD, Inv, MGT. Okay? Done! Well done. In addition to all of that, I think another point to mention is Geeky Medics. They are excellent for all the OSCE videos that you will ever need. Just use Geeky Medics. Every student I've ever tutored, I just say to them, think of it as a choreography. You just need to learn the routine, learn it until it becomes imprinted on your mind so much so that you can do it without thinking. That's how much you should be watching it. So, good luck on your nationals. If I can do it, so can you. And I wish you all the best. Goodbye.